Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, as, after uh, listening to Mr. O'Donnell uh, describe tennis, I'm thrilled that he's not a dodgeball fan. What, you know, um, I just want to address two things. You know, I, I have been in support of this for, uh, uh, since, for many, many years now. And the only thing that I really have been questioning is the head injury aspect. Uh, um, but before I talk about that, I do want to talk about the domestic violence issues and, and the, the alleged homophobia that's involved in the sport. Because first of all, you know, many times when we look at the domestic violence, what it does to our children, how it makes people behave, it's frustrating because much of this is taking a correlation and drawing a conclusion from that correlation. And many of us get very, very frustrated when we hear that type of science being bantered about by you know, the religious right or someone else. So I'm not someone who really, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I think we need to be careful that we're not taking correlations and really, really uh, uh, drawing conclusions from those correlations. I also want to point out, with respect to uh, uh, women, you know, if we went around this room and asked everyone to name one professional UFC MMA fighter, odds are they could probably name one, Ronda Rousey, the female. So, you know, there's something empowering about that or ought to be. I'm also really encouraged that more so than any other professional sport in the United States, more so than Major League Baseball, more so than the NFL, than basketball, the UFC, MMA, the professional MMA fighters are really standing up for my rights as a gay individual. They're the ones who are putting their names on the brief when a marriage equality went to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. They're the ones who are joining with us in New York City to combat HIV AIDS. They're the ones who are going into Nevada to help create LGBTQ centers. They're the ones who are taking their former professionals, professionals like Forrest uh, uh, Garrett, who is an out and open gay man, and parading him about, uh, around as someone to be emulated, as a hero. Haven't seen that in any other professional sport in this country. Um, so much of this debate has been around, and the opposition has been around, an individual rather than the sport itself. And it is a sport. And I want to point out that there has been some comments made about fighting even when the person is on the ground. Well, that's cultural. That comes from the uh, martial arts aspect. And maybe, yes, it is jarring as a Westerner to first see that, but in judo and many other martial arts, when that, and for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, when your opponent is down, the fight continues. Yes, for us who are accustomed to boxing, that is rather jarring, but that's mixed martial arts. I also want to uh, address the comments about schoolyard fighting. You know, we, we have a colleague here whose a, a, a deceased brother was a mixed martial artist, as are her nephews. And one of the things that, you know, she can tell you that I would agree with, that first and foremost, you learn discipline. That's what you do when you learn mixed martial arts. You learn discipline. And that means you don't go out into the schoolyard and practice your sport, your art, your discipline on those who are not engaged in the combat with you. So there is more to it than actually meets the eye or to the, the speculation, the hypothesis that have been the what ifs that have been thrown around in this chamber by those who are opposed. Um, gambling, it's going to increase gambling. No, no, gambling's there. That's a, per that's a problem with us not financing uh, uh, gambling addiction, not, not fighting it. Uh, uh, funding it adequately. So that's on us. It's not on the sport. Um, 
So, you know, I, and I want to be clear. I am not a sports fan. I am not an MMA fan. Um, March Madness for me means getting all my receipts ready for my accountant. Um, you know, and quite frankly, if I wanted to see half-naked men in a cage fighting over a belt where the winner gets a purse, I'd go to Fire Island. But I do support this because also when we talk, and again, I want to that many good points have been made about the head injury, but we're not doing that in a vacuum. The participants, the professionals who engage in, in a, not only boxing, football, uh, uh, but mixed martial arts are well aware of the risk that they are taking. And that's why we do have things like insurance and we ensure that insurance is provided to them and at a nominal limit, a minimal limit, and they can then make the decision with, no, one, do they want to continue the sport knowing the risk that they're going to take? And number two, how much insurance do I want? Should I do this? And I know, you know, you know it's easy to probably, you know, people get up after me and say, you know, my arguments uh, uh, are flimsy and weak. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But I want to, you know, really stress that every argument in opposition that I've heard, many of them are very, very good. But if we don't have professional uh, uh, MMA, we're still going to have the amateur. So we've solved nothing. Uh, if we're worried about kids or children seeing it uh, uh, in public, well, they already can. They just can't see it live from New York. That's all. Um, so again, I'm not a fan of the sport. I am going to choose, once it's legal, not to go see it. Um, I have not been, I've had no contributions. I want to be clear if the FBI is truly watching me. I have not received one dime, uh, uh, although my campaign has asked many times from many people and organizations. Um, but, so, uh, to me, it's really a, a personal choice. You know, you either, you're either for it or against it. You want to see it or you don't. You want to engage in it or you don't, period. So I'll be voting yes. I support it. I, th I really thank the sponsor for picking this up and for really uh, uh, truly listening to the concerns of those who have been opposed to this and taking those concerns and, and really addressing them uh, uh, um, thoroughly in the bill. So, Ms. Morelli, uh, congratulations on that. And congratulations on bringing this to the floor. Mr. Speaker, I will be voting yes on this bill. Thank you, Mr. Titone. Mr. Goldfeder. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't want to repeat what's already been said, and a lot of my colleagues on both sides of this argument have said it quite eloquently. What I do want to do is tell a story about a couple that live in my district, uh, Sarah and Chris Romulo. Sarah and Chris opened up a small gym in Rockaway just a few months before Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy literally wiped them out. Now, this is a family that came together, took every last dime to invest in this gym, to invest in this idea that they can get physical fitness into the community, and Sandy literally wiped them out. And with no help from government, with no help from outside organizations, they picked themselves up, and they found a way to reopen their, reopen their gym bigger and better than it was before. This is not about big entity somewhere. This is not only about the billions and billions of dollars that are going to be made somewhere else that doesn't affect our district, that doesn't affect our communities. This is about Sarah and Chris Romulo, who run Crom Physical Fitness. Their motto is, and I want to read it, physical culture is a concept which is born when a community joins together to establish a philosophy, regimen, or lifestyle seeking maximum physical, mental, spiritual, and social development through met methods such as fitness, nutrition, athletics, martial arts, and mental discipline. That sounds pretty good to me. This is a family who literally from nothing picked themselves up to, to, to teach our young children, to teach our community the right way to fight, the right way to exercise, the right way to be healthy. This is not just about the big venues and the big money. This is about every one of our communities. It's about giving Sarah and Chris that opportunity to survive instead of tying their hands behind their back. It's about giving them the opportunity to be successful and to thrive and to continue to hire and create jobs in our own communities. 
So my vote today is for Sarah and Chris and for every other small business across this state that deserves a chance to survive. Thank you. Mr. Goldfeder, thank you very much. Ms. Bichat. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, first, I would like to congratulate and thank the sponsor of this bill. Um, I must say that um, it's really interesting. I didn't know that mixed martial arts was banned in the, in the state of New York uh, when I came uh, into office, given that I spent a number of years in uh, the state of Illinois. And um, as a former martial artist, or say artist in terms of trainee, red, ba red black belt, I actually support mixed martial arts as a legitimate professional sport, just like any other sports. Um, I believe that we as New Yorkers should not really impose our opinion on recreational activities and sports that are widely accepted. Mixed martial arts fighting takes place in a highly regulated and controlled environment. As trained fighters, they are trained to defend themselves and learn how to take punches. I actually studied single discipline and mixed martial arts for over six years. Karate, kickboxing, judo, taekwondo, hapido, aikido, shotokan, including knowing how to use some of the weapons, swords, nutchucks, but all were done in the name of self-control, discipline, and self-defense. And most importantly, good exercise. For children, martial arts, to me, doesn't have a negative impact. In, 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 in fact, again, it teaches self-discipline, when to use your skills, when not to use these skills to uh, hurt others. What's barbaric, it's not mixed martial arts to me, it's more so around gun violence and the many guns that are killing our children out in the streets, in particular, children of color. So when it comes to women in particular, martial arts, single discipline, mixed martial arts. It has been a tool to defend oneself. Um, it built confidence for me and for many other women. Respect, you know, people know not to mess with me. <laughs> and let me tell you, I've been in many situations where I have avoided dangerous situations. Many cases were uh, domestic violence. So whether one may see it as a violent sport, we have to think about why we're voting for this bill. It's to regulate, just like many other high contact, highly combative sports like hockey, football, um, boxing, it too should be regulated. <clears throat> so with the provisions that are in place in this bill, the medical, the health insurance, the protections, the economic boost that it will give the state of New York, I think the pros, for me, the pros far outweighs the cons. And therefore, I support lifting the ban on mixed martial arts fighting in New York State and making it legal and regulated. So thank you so much, and I certainly want to congratulate the sponsor of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zabrowski. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. On the bill? On the bill, sir. I was a supporter of this basically from the start, as far as back as I can remember, and I believe I was a co-sponsor of it, and thank the sponsor for his good work from the moment the current version was introduced. 
Some of the motives, I think, of members were brought up before, so I feel like it's incumbent to say that when I go home, back to my district, this is something that people talk to me about. When I knock on doors or when I go to any type of social engagement, there are people that care about this, that support this, that ask me when is New York going to get on, on board, when will they be able to attend an event in their home state. Um, these are people that aren't necessarily organized, they haven't issued any memos, they're not necessarily used to petitioning their government, but nonetheless these are people that deserve to have their voices heard. You can't have a sport with these type of ratings, with this type of popularity, and act as if there's not New Yorkers across the state and all of our districts that care about this. And that's really what our system is based upon, right, is that any issue, it may not be something that is the most important issue. We're in the middle of a budget season and we have a lot of interests on many different issues that are lobbying, but there are all types of issues, big, small, and to those people, many of which are probably getting off work right now, to those people, this is one of their hobbies. This is one of the things that they do on weekends. They get together and they watch this sport. Now, I don't dismiss the concerns of a lot of my colleagues. I don't dismiss it at all. I think they make a lot of good points. I may disagree with many, and I think some of my other colleagues have gone through um, the opposition, so I won't reiterate that, but I don't dismiss it. But I think if we're going to debate whether or not New York should make it legal, it is incumbent upon us to look at it in the context of we are the only state. There are 49 other states that have this legal. So what are we accomplishing by keeping it illegal? I think for those that are in opposition, you have to say to yourself, well, we should keep it illegal because I believe it's better in a way because by being illegal, less people will be watching it or less people will be participating it. And frankly, in the current context of us being the only state, I just think that's not true. In terms of people watching it, pay-per-view, cable television, network television, I think there's even been reality shows based upon the sport. Anybody who wants to watch this at any age is currently watching it regardless of what happens with this bill. So nobody, whether we pass it or don't pass it, Will be, uh, will be prevented from watching it. So everybody has access to it. We are in a, a day and age where on smartphones people can pull up videos or sometimes even pull up live events and watch it. Now let's go to people that are participating in the sport. As you've heard before, we have a host of amateurs that are participating in events and we also have gyms across the state that are already training people in it. They're not regulated, they're not as safe as they could be, but people are participating in it. And if you do get to a level of being a professional, in an increasingly mobile society, these individuals can train in New York and participate in a professional event in any other state. Now we live in a, a large, large state. So to travel from one part of New York to another part of New York, in many cases, is far further than traveling from a part of New York to one, two, three, or even possibly four other states. So if you're at that professional level, you can go to any other state. So it's really not stopping anybody from participating in it. So you're not stopping anybody from watching it, you're not stopping any, anybody from participating in it, but you are, you are having a, a situation where we have no regulatory framework. So in the amateur, there's no rules that say when a fighter can fight, that the, the type of things, you know, how often, if they have certain type of injuries, when can they get back in the ring? You have none of those type of things, none of those type of protections. So in actuality, you probably have more people that could participate in it now, unsafely, than you do if we pass the bill that the uh, sponsor has put forth. I think the, the concept I really want to leave people with is, look folks, the horse has left the barn on this issue. We're one state out of 50 that, that don't have this legal. And we're really not accomplishing anything uh, by it. The only thing we're accompli uh, accomplishing is people are less safe. And those hardworking New Yorkers that this is their hobby, they can't go to events 
in their own state. Those folks I talked about earlier that have talked to me about it, that live in my district, that are petitioning their government by talking to me, they go to Newark. Rockland County is a border, a border county down in southern New York. They go to Newark. They can go to other states quite easily. They just can't go to those venues within New York. So I think it's past due that New York sets up a framework where it's safer, where it's legal, where we can regulate the sport, make it safe for amateurs, stop sending tourism dollars to other parts of the state, and recognize that this is something that New Yorkers watch, that we're not, we're not having an ounce of prevention by being the only state in the union given the current technological and mobile aspects of our society. And all we're doing is really sending revenue and preventing people from watching a support, from watching a support in their own state. So before we start to debate the other aspects of good, bad, or indifferent, I think we need to take a realistic look of where we are in New York and what we're achieving. So that's why I'll be supporting the bill, Mr. Speaker, as well as the other things I think our ABLE sponsor and some of our other members have put forth about the regulations and where the sport was and where it's come. And I would encourage all my colleagues to support the bill as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Roth. Speaker, on the bill? On the bill, sir. Um, I, I know the hour is getting late and this has been a, a lengthy debate, but I, I just want to quickly uh, bring forth a point. So think about for a second if you you grew up in athletics and you trained hard and you were able to, through just pure hard work, rise to the top of your profession, something that's the largest, probably fastest, one of the fastest growing sports in the world, and you got to the top of that mountain, the top of your profession, and people said, you're not allowed no, to conduct your profession we're, we're, in your home state. Like well, there's a, there's a uh, MMA uh, athlete named Chris Weidman from Long Island, and perhaps it's appropriate that uh, we start a session today by honoring people from Baldwin High School, uh, where he's from. And I've, I had the opportunity a few years ago at an event to meet him right after he won the UFC championship. And he asked, you know, what's going on? Why can't I fight New York State? And you know what? I had a hard time really giving him an answer because we've known for years there was support for this bill in this house, but it just wasn't getting the chance to come out to the floor. So I think the previous speaker spoke very well about the fact that with all the uh, amendments and regulations that will come forth with this, we are actually taking action not just to allow people like that to conduct this activity in New York State, but we are actually putting forth uh, initiatives that are going to make this sport safer and are going to allow the people who participate in New York to do it safely. They're going to certainly be aware that there's some risk, but we're going to make sure it's done in the safest way possible. We're going to, in the process, generate uh, economic activity for our state. And that, that doesn't just mean, you know, the large venues. It means smaller venues. It means the mom and pop restaurants and stores that are around those venues uh, when people are going to come into town to, to view these events. Um, and lastly, I want to talk a little bit about just the athletes that participate in this uh, in general. You know, we can talk about domestic violence. We can talk about all different types of things. There are bare apples in every profession there is. And we should not confuse, you know, that just because they participate in a certain activity that that's the cause of somebody uh, being a bad apple. That's not necessarily the case. And from what I know, I, I will tell you, I'm not you know, huge into MMA, but I've, I've watched some bouts and I, I've learned a little bit about some of the participants. And there are people who are probably amongst the most charitable uh, athletes in the world who work with organizations that help kids, that help uh, be a positive role model for those kids. So. All in all, I think this is pretty much uh, an obvious thing for us to support, to get on board with the rest of the country and allow uh, people like Chris we Weidman to hopefully, I know he's uh, fighting to regain his championship in a few months, and I hope his first defense will be right here in his home state of New York. Uh, and I commend uh, the sponsor for his work 
uh, not just in leading this to the floor, but certainly uh, making amendments as necessary to get additional support, uh, and certainly thank uh, the sponsor. And just a quick hat tip to my colleague, uh, Dean Murray, who I know has been an advocate for years for this bill. Uh, I'm happy to be voting yes for this bill to finally become law in New York State. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Simon. Thank you, on the bill. On the bill, Ms. Simon. I'd like to support a number of my colleagues who have raised issues about violence, particularly violence against women, and the encouragement that we will give to children to pursue violence on a professional level. I also, as someone who has worked with many in individuals with brain injury, share my great concerns about the increase of brain injuries and the neurological and neuropsychological damage, which are things like memory and concentration and chronic pain that will result from people who are engaged in this activity. I don't believe making an unsafe activity safer is good enough. I think if New York is the last state, that's fine. As my father used to say, if everybody's jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge, are you going to join them? I think we don't join them and jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. I think New York should be a leader in protecting the brains of our citizens, and I will be voting against this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Weinstein. Uh, would the sponsor yield for two, a quick question or two? Mr. Morelli, will you yield? Mr. Morelli yes, yields, Ms. Weinstein. Yes. Uh, Mr. Morelli, is there anything in this legislation that prohibits someone who was convicted of uh, domestic violence, a family offense, from uh, participating as a, a mixed martial arts fighter? In well, event? I think uh, under, the, uh, under the provisions of the bill, the State Athletic Commission will establish rules and regulations related to licensure, as they do for boxing, single discipline, uh, martial arts and mixed martial arts would be a part of that as well. And the question of whether the Athletic Commission could prohibit someone under the, under the provisions of the bill uh, from getting a license due to that, um, while not explicitly delineated in the bill, would certainly be within their rights. So would you then support uh, such uh, if it's not in the bill, and I looked quickly, I didn't see something, I thought maybe I had missed it, but would you support the, uh, the concept that someone who does have a domestic violence conviction should not be allowed to participate in, in a, a match if this bill were to become law? Well, I, I think if you look at domestic violence, um, I think it would be, it seems to me, um, somewhat hypocritical. We have professional football players, we have professional basketball players, we have boxers, we have professional, um, we have attorneys, uh, we have a number of people in the state of New York licensed um, who, who participate in a professional manner convicted of all, a whole host of offenses and that doesn't necessarily mean they can't practice whatever it is. Obviously uh, we wouldn't, I would think, not have two standards, one for everyone else and one for people who are choosing to participate in mixed martial arts. I, I think that, uh, well, let, let me speak on the bill. And thank you, Mr. Morelli. On the bill, Ms. Weinstein. So last, uh, last year, uh, HBO Real Sports uh, had a, a program, and it talked about, uh, and actually I'm reading from an MMA site, so I would think that this is probably a fairly accurate description of the uh, program. It uh, reports, it reported how, so the HBO Real Sports reported how there was a disproportionate rate of domestic violence in MMA. Uh, in fact, finding that their uh, research through public records found that the incidents, uh, the arrest rate in domestic violence in this sample found, uh, and HBO Real Sports found 750 MMA fighters and actually in an area that we have heard about domestic violence and, and sports, uh, players found that the, in, compared to the 750 MMA fighters, 210 NFL players. Uh, so I, and it, the, the uh, 
show then went on to interview a number of the women who had were ex, uh, had been involved with some of these uh, fighters who were had were them were victims of of domestic violence, and they the show also spoke about how some of these fighters, uh, despite their arrest record and their conviction record, were subsequently hired to participate in future MMA uh, bouts. Uh, I would agree, and, and that is some of the reason why people, a number of people in the domestic violence community, uh, advocates for uh, victims, are very concerned about this legislation and New York uh, being joining the, the rest of the, the states. Uh, obviously, this legislation passes, as colleagues have said, we will probably not limit the number of people who have an ability to watch on TV these matches, but knowing that the, we spend so much time in our, in our state, in this body, advancing legislation, making the point to protect victims of domestic violence, making the public policy argument that we don't tolerate violence against women in our state. Uh, we can take the bold move by rejecting this bill, saying not only do we care about their mental health, the, the potential brain injuries of the individuals participating, but that we in our state don't want to promote a sport that promotes violence against against women that has shown to have a number of a disproportionate number of individuals who are domestic violence abusers and it is an important when we act uh, the public policy argument that we makes that we make is something that can be listened to and sometimes just that act is as important as the actual actions that we take, whether we legalize the sport in our state or not. For that reason, I'd be voting no when we uh, get to the vote later. Thank you. Mr. Blake. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will, will the sponsor yield for a few questions? Mr. Morelli, will you yield? Yes, sir. Thank Mr. You. Morelli yields. Thank you, Mr. Morelli. What, what's the expected economic impact if this were to uh, pass on today and, and become regulated here? Well, as I indicated earlier, I think there's both a um, an anticipation that there would be revenues to the state, uh, but also economic activity as venues may be selected to host professional mixed martial arts uh, competition and matches. I'm not, I, I think the difficulty, um, Mr. Blake, is that until those competitions are actually agreed to and contracts set, it's hard to estimate, but there is estimates that it's in the millions of dollars of economic activity in the region. That doesn't necessarily, again, relate directly to revenues to various local governments of the state, but um, certainly in terms of economic, economic activity, to those people involved in the hotel business and the restaurant business and other retail uh, venues, uh, this would be a significant investment. 